know, I'm hot in this robe, but I thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> the graduation starts at 7, so for those who wanted to see it, I figured I'd go live. I'm really excited. Thank you all for your support all of these years. It's been a 30-year journey from Newburgh Free Academy to Faith International University. There it is. Faith. You can see it. Graduation is soon, anyhow. I'm, a, I'm really excited about this. Hello, everyone. The commencement, I'm going to actually share it on the screen. You guys can watch, and thank you for your congratulations. Thank you, Kingdom, for all your gifts and all of your encouragement. Um, bump the AC. Yeah, I need to do something like that. It's hot in this velvet robe. I've always wanted this, this funny-looking hat. Well, I got one now with the tassel and, and my bars. Oh, this. I got my bars and um, a new, new journey. So really excited, everybody. Thank you all. Thank my family for all the support. And um, in this weird year, there's no commencement at the school. So here we are at home celebrating it. I'm waiting for it to, to go live on, um, on, the, on the website. Um, the program is pretty simple. I'll share that one in a moment um, just so you can see, see the program from the school. Faith International University was faith. It was uh, formerly called Faith Evangelical Lutheran Seminary. Then it was Faith um, Evangelical Seminary. Um, they actually tried to modernize the name and then they have a Korean and a Chinese uh, division of the school. So they're Faith International University um, out of Tacoma Washington, um, I connected with the school through a preaching conference in Los Angeles uh, called WHW, um, which was, um, we went there to learn how to conjugate Greek and Hebrew in order to uh, exegete the scripture. Some of the brightest minds and greatest preachers in the world were there teaching us. And for, for, I think, three or four years we were going, we actually got college credits for taking these classes. They were that intense. Um, and from those credits, uh, the school, Faith, uh, Faith Seminary, actually invited us to enroll in their Master's of Divinity program there. I actually have two masters from the school, Master of, of Arts and Theology, which was a terminal degree that I actually flipped into a Master's of Divinity, which I believe was the best investment of time that I ever made in my life to learn the scriptures and to challenge my faith. And um, it was powerful, um, orthodox, um, and, and spiritual degree that um, really helped to, um, help to prepare me for the ministry. And so um, my MDiv, I finished, I believe it's 2000 and, I don't know, 15 or something like that. And then, um, of course, uh, the, the doctoral program I, I finished in four years, and um, I have a doctorate of religion um, with a focus on strategic leadership and transitional leadership, uh, transformational leadership. So um, I wrote my, my final project in on transformational and transitional leadership, um, which actually was in the form of a book um, that we put out last year. Um, called Taking the Wheel. Yeah, there it is here. Put out the year before last, Taking the Wheel in a Moving Car. So this was my project. Um, well, the basis of my project came from this book, um, just about uh, managing systems and, um, and helping the, the modern church to, to um, navigate um, the, the tsunami of leadership change that, that we were expecting and then COVID-19 accelerated. So that's what it is. Um, I, I never thought I would be a doctor, but you know, this was something that happened from years and years of studying. So, and uh, my church supported me through it all, my family, of course. And so today we celebrate uh, the completion of, of a journey, a saga, uh, at the beginning of, of my work, um, to lead the church. And, um, that's, that's my, my life. My life goal is to do that. Um, Dr. Mann, I see Linda Mann on here. I see so many of you that have supported us over the years. And um, 
I want to thank you so much for inspiring us and keeping us in your prayers um, through the ups and downs, through the, the mistakes and the missteps that we've taken over the years. Um, but one thing, God has been faithful. Taylor, God bless you. God bless all of you who are joining us um, on Facebook and soon will be joining us on Zoom. Um, th this has been a monumental, a monumental, um, wonderful uh, journey. I've learned so much. Um, Dr. Adams, Dr. Michael Adams, Dr. Um, House, Dr. Um, Mounts, uh, many, so many of my favorite professors, um, wonderful men of God and women of God that taught us over the years. It's just good to be done, Bill. I see you on here. Thank you. Thank you all. I see you all on here. T. Lewis, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't take, I didn't miss an opportunity to celebrate what God has done. This was only his grace that allowed me to finish it uh, while being a missionary, while traveling the world with my brother, Dr. Bostic and um, Dr. Sampson, another inspiration in my life, Dr. Bottoms, of course, my mentor, my father in the ministry, and then my dad. I don't know if he's watching right now, but my dad, Arthur Costin, has, has been the biggest inspiration in my life. And I, I want to say to him, now my wife pushes me. She's the most beautiful gift you could ever have. Thank God for her. She's brilliant. She's smart. She's witty. And um, she's, she's magical. And um, I thank God for her support and her allowing me to do all the things, all the crazy things that God tells me to do, um, for real. She lets me go, and um, even if it hurts, she lets me do what God tells me to do, including coming to Yonkers and then bringing her to Yonkers and then going to Africa and South America and all over the place, uh, doing the work of God. And it's only just begun. And so my family has shared me with God as an offering, and I thank God for it. I love all of y'all, for real, for real, for real. For real, for real, for real, for real. It looks like the graduation is starting in a few minutes. And so um, I'm actually gonna share that screen. It's kind of loud, but it's all good. Yep, so let's see if we can do that. If you can see it, if we have any problems with that, just let me know. If you come on Zoom, just mute your phone. Um, the, the graduation is going to start in a minute and 36 seconds. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is do a full screen. Boom, you can see that. Um, this is strange. I wish I could be in the graduation to do this. While we waiting for that thing to start, it's, um, I just wanted to say to everybody, I love y'all. I'm so excited, for real. I'm so glad this is done. You have no idea. My family's here smiling at me, and I'm smiling at them. I'm sweating like I'm in a sauna. Yeah, she gonna, my wife is going to the the, turn the air conditioner on. Huh? I'm a doctor for what? Oh, I can afford this. Well, I need some of that doctor's money to pay some of these doctors' uh, school school bills. So, you know, anybody, you know, got some some professorships, you know, I need I need some help there. But anyhow, you're all here taking up the entire first two rows. That's so what's up. Uh -huh. Bishop's on. My bishop, I love you. You inspired me. I followed in your footsteps. And I'm honored to be your son, bishop. I really am. Patty Dodd said, we're all here. We're taking up the first two rows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna, um, the commencement looks like it's beginning, you know, cause they do start on time at this level. So I'm gonna just play that. Okay, you got a minute and 41 seconds. What made you apply to get your doctor? I didn't feel like I was finished. Did this feel like you're done? 
um, <laughs> done with a thing. Like, there's nothing else I can do with this one. Maybe go back and, and do some certifications, but it's it's a done deal. So I, I definitely, um, I, I definitely feel like I've, I've finished a thing, a thing. Yeah, but life just, you know, it's just beginning. I'm challenged by the credential now to be smart <laughs> and to be helpful. So, um, you know, I just want to teach people and empower people around me to, uh, to be the best they can. And um, in turn, I can be the best I can be. I just want to empower people for real. I want y'all to be great. Let y'all be great, you know. Ooh, she turned the AC on. It's like an act of mercy. Bella. What is my dog doing? Jesus. Can y'all stretch your hands and pray for my dog? <laughs> Just stretch your hands right now. We got company and you had intercessors. She prayed for you, Bella. Yeah, I'm challenged by the credential. I, I think that being, receiving the credential now makes you want to live up to it. Whatever you did to get it, is really behind you and that now you want to make sure that you are legitimate as you carry it and so yeah um yeah i think that's where i am with that so uh, for real it's exciting i mean there's so many other doctors before me praying for dr beller while she you get your doctor no you're not getting your diploma <laughs> A very spiritual school. I need to say that about my school. It, I was afraid of, of, um, yeah, I was afraid of, of how well or how not well, um, I would survive in my faith at, at, se in seminary because I've heard so many things about how they, they just, they kind of shred the Bible for you. But this, this school, has been um, quite uh, remarkable in how they chose the professors who had enough um, spirit in them and practical knowledge that I thought I felt safe being taught by them. And if I disagreed, that I had the right to express that and I wasn't, I wasn't blackballed for disagreeing. And many times we were able to develop thoughts together and so a very um, conservative school, they're not liberal at, at no level, no sense of the word are they liberal, but I think they were reasonable conservative. And so um, it was a blessing to be able to learn from some of the great professors that I learned there. And um, you shouldn't be afraid of seminary and the high, you know, the terminal degrees, the higher degrees, um, because you become useful. You become very useful in your generation. And God needs apologists. He needs people to protect, to protect the the faith and to defend the faith. And I believe I took I took on this this path of study in order to play my part in in making sure the faith makes it to the next generation. Um, in its pure form without it being um, twisted. And God has been faithful in keeping it, keeping the, uh, his, the gospel. We'll start it. Start it. God, you let the same strength as the you know, people who are giving you the I do have the same stripes. The name above all King of every nation, free That's John. He's my friend. <laughs> Dr. Adams. As we honor and recognize the good work that you first began in us and in this graduating class of 2020, that you will bring it to completion upon the return of your son, Jesus the Christ. Can you hear? Oh. As we acknowledge all that you are in our lives and in the midst of these challenging times for our entire nation and the world, we stand triumphantly on the inerrancy of your word and the promise that has come through the hearing and the receiving of your son as our Lord and Savior. Lord, as we look for divine inspiration and godly wisdom, we thank you for providing the governing board at Faith International University to help guide and steer this biblical training center through the president, Dr. Michael Adams, and the Faith Administration. You have assembled a faculty and a staff, Father God, who truly lead with servant hearts as they dedicate their lives in obedience to you. To the class of 2020, 
We pray that whether this is your first, second, or even third terminal degree with us at Faith International, that you are influencers in the spheres in which encompass you. Take heed. The knowledge and the skills acquired through your degree program are to be put into use on the battlefield. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church and the ministries that the Lord has called you to serve him. We pray God's blessing upon you, graduating class of 2020. May the enemy tremble knowing that you are equipped more fully to forcefully advance God's kingdom. It is in the most powerful and most majestic name above all names that we pray. And the people of the church said amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's first, second letter. This is my classmate, Andrew. Andrew. I helped him with his you homework. Then, my child, now he's the registrar. Be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. faculty may be seated, and if you're standing at home, you may be seated as well. On behalf of the governing board, the faculty, and the administration, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 48th annual commencement of Faith International University and Seminary. Before this time, we have held 47 commencements in person, but The times, they are a-changing, and rather than quote Bob Dylan, I suppose it more fitting to quote the Bible and to be like the men of Issachar who knew the signs of the times. These are definitely different times. But it is a prayerful, certainly unique day, but it should also be a celebratory day as well. And I hope you're doing that at home, surrounded by family and friends, being as socially distanced as you deem necessary. As we prudently greet the class of 2020 in this manner, I hope that those of you who wish to graduate in person will think about doing so at our commencement in Los Angeles this year in early October or in the July commencement next year. We would love to have you participate if at all possible. Our 2020 graduates represent a scholarly and noble group of Christian disciples who have grown strong both intellectually and spiritually. They are students who have been diligent in their studies to show themselves approved. 
They are graduates of a seminary founded 51 years ago and built on the inerrancy of Holy Scripture, and they'll continue to uphold faithfully the Word of God in whatever capacity the Lord ordains. Our school is built on the legacy of many, but none more so than that of our late president and founder, the Reverend Dr. R. H. Radall, a longtime visionary pastor with an incredible tenor voice. And it's a delight later on in this program to have a recording of some music that he and his two sons, Mark and Paul, who currently like sit on our governing board, they'll be presenting that, loud, offering yeah. those songs in just a moment. It's also a delight to recognize members of our distinguished faculty who are here. We thank you for Emmanuel uh, Lutheran Church for hosting this event and for its dynamic leader, the Reverend Dan Shaw. Pastor Shaw will be bringing our message, that is, he'll be bringing our charge to the graduates this evening in just a moment as well. This commencement will run smoothly because of the efforts of our registrar. You already heard from him, Dr. Andrew Kayanen, and of course our audio and video technician, Nate Griffin. We thank you very much. There are two things I inevitably say at our annual commencement. The first is for the graduates. It was said many years ago by Thomas Gillespie, the former president of Princeton Theological Seminary, and that is, the world is not waiting with bated breath for your arrival upon the scene. As a matter of fact, for the world, the opposite is true. Yet you live to serve Jesus Christ and obey the word of God no matter how much you may offend the world. And although the world may not be excited about you, we are. Angels rejoice over you and demons tremble. And the second thing I always say is for those who are witnessing the event or surrounding you currently. And that is, you're here for a dual purpose. You're here to come under the hearing of the word of which these graduates are living letters, living epistles, and you're here to celebrate, that is, make some noise, to clap and cheer when you hear that special name called. I encourage it. The graduates have earned it. They have plunged deeper into the Word of God they know that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, not a rewarder of those who casually inquire about Him. God is pleased with the efforts of our graduates, and so we cheer them on. So welcome to a unique and certainly momentous event. Congratulations to the graduates, the class of 2020. May God be praised and glorified in all we say and do. And I now ask that the Reverend Dr. Q Hyun Lee, Executive Dean of International Programs, bring a greeting as well. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Welcome, class of 2020. Families and friends and guests who are watching this event online. For over 50 years, Faith International University has been providing education and professional training for ministers, lay leaders, and leaders of the next generations to serve the kingdom of God based upon the inerrancy of the Bible and its principles. During the course of our history, we have been reaching out and providing our education for different kinds of ethnic groups, not only in this country, but also for the people abroad. Among them, we have been privileged to serve African-Americans and Africans, Asian-Americans and Asians, especially Koreans by establishing Korean division in 25 years ago with longer history of operation with Korea. We also established Chinese division in rather recent years while we are hoping for establishing Hispanic division in our future. It has become one of our traditions for me to speak a few words in Korean, as I have been serving our Korean division for about 25 years. As I speak a few words in Korean, please use your gift of tongues or gift of interpretation or your language skills, if you do have, to understand it. 2020학년도 졸업생 여러분 그리고 
가족, 친지 여러분 본 졸업식에 이렇게 참여하신 것을 환영하고 또 졸업하는 우리 졸업생 여러분들을 축하합니다. 수고하셨습니다. 많은 수고들과 여러 가지 애들을 쓰시면서 학습, 과제 활동 그리고 박사 과정에 있어서는 논문까지 여러 과정을 거치며 많은 노력들을 마무리하시고 이 모든 것들을 소정의 기준을 통과하셔서 본 졸업의 장에 나오신 것으로 압니다. 이번 2020년도는 좀더 의미 깊은 졸업식이 되는 것 같습니다. 전염병으로 인한 여러 가지 어려움들을 우리가 모두 겪고 있는 그런 시기에 그런 악조건들과 함께 어려움들과 함께 여러분들 학업의 과정들을 성실히 수행하시고 끝까지 잘 마무리를 하셔서 이 자리에까지 오신 줄로 믿습니다. 그러므로 이 자리에 오시게 된 여러 졸업생 여러분들의 노고와 참여가 큰 의미가 있을 것을 믿고 부탁드리고 싶은 말씀은 이런 과정을 거치면서 얻게 된이 졸업의 의미와 함께 여러분이 다시 이 각양의 사역의 장으로 나가실 때또 다른 모양과 형태의 어려움들과 도전들을 경험하실 것이라는 것을 생각하면서 여러분들 믿음과 헌신으로 잘 극복해내시기를 주의 이름으로 어, 부탁드립니다. Thank you for your understanding. Bless you all. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Lee, for that greeting. I'm sure the uh, second part of that was as scintillating as the first. At this time, we're going to present some music to be performed by the late Reverend Dr. R. H. Radal, the school's founder, and his two sons, Mark and Paul. They'll be singing, Onward, Christian Soldiers. Onward, Christian Soldiers, unto thee. The attack of Christian soldiers marching and through war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle. Oh, 
At this time, I present to you our commencement speaker, the Reverend Dan Shaw. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to talk to you tonight, and it's such an honor to be up here with you all. And to have this occur at Emmanuel Lutheran Church here in Tacoma is really special to our church, and I hope this night is special to you as well. It's a thank you to Dr. Adams for graciously inviting uh, me to speak and for, for our church to host. So what we're gonna do for the next 10 or 11 minutes, I just wanna share with you four principles that come from scripture, which I'm sure you've heard taught to you over the course of however long your studies have taken by these gentlemen and by other men and women at, the, at, the, at faith. These are principles that are all about what it means to share the gospel because that's ultimately what we're studying for. Because if we're not studying to share the gospel, then we're not studying for the gospel and we're not studying for the mission of Jesus Christ. Then it's then we're not on mission. Right. So this is about sharing the gospel, advancing the gospel, and saving pe people having salvation experience deep inside their hearts. And so there's a couple principles that we get from the Apostle Paul that I would like to share with you, which you've heard but in my ministry experience, I've been a pastor for 18 years in revitalization projects, a uh, military chaplain for 18 years, deployed with the Marine Corps to Iraq in 2007, and basically started a church from scratch, and have experienced also ministry through coaching football at Bellarmine Prep here in Tacoma. So I have, I have a wide range in these principles that I'm going to give you. I've learned through this experience. It'd just be better if you could just listen today or listen for the last couple of years and you don't have to learn from the experience or just read your Bible and say, oh, that's what the Bible says. That's what I need to do. That's actually the simpler method. So lock in and let's pay attention to these four principles. The first one comes from 1 Thessalonians 1 and it's be incarnational. They teach you this in the military. What does Paul say in 1 Thessalonians 1? You know how I lived among you. Now, what that means I didn't experience until I was a military chaplain is that Jesus Christ does not call you as a Christian leader to be a commuter to your congregation or to your people. We don't commute. We live among them. If they're going through junk, we go through junk. If they're rejoicing, we rejoice. If they need prayer, we're there with them. We're experiencing everything that the community is. And if we're not, Jesus Christ didn't commute from heaven and save us. Is that correct? Yes. So what did Jesus Christ do? He came and he, what does John chapter one, it says verse 14, and the word became flesh and what? Tabernacled among us, right? And, li and lived among us. So your ministry has to be incarnational. There's a great book. It's not a Christian book written by Stephen Pressfield called The Gates of Fire. And it's about the Spartans at the Thermopylae Gates. And it's historical fiction. And the Persians were asking the Spartans about their leader, who was King Leonidas. And they asked, they asked them, well, where does your king stay? And they said, where do you guys stay? Where does your king stay? Expecting some difference, because obviously with Xerxes, there were differences between how he lived and how his troops lived. And they said, well, we live in this dirt hole over here, and, and Leonidas lives in that dirt hole over there. And that's the difference. There is no difference. It's incarnational. You're with your people. And I, the military ministry taught me that. You are in, if they're getting shot at, you're getting shot at. If you're dirty, if they're dirty, you're dirty. And this is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians. I, you know how I lived among you. Be incarnational. Do not commute to your ministry. Number two, who is your ministry for? And I can't believe it. And we did not collude on this. I had planned to speak on 2 Timothy 2. And he, you, when you read that, you, you can't see me. I'm off camera. My jaw just about went, whoa. And specifically verses 8, 9, and 10, where he says, Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Who is your ministry for? It was, is the second point. Ask yourself that question. And I didn't learn this again until about five or six or seven years into being a pastor that my ministry primarily at first was for me. That's not good. 
What does Paul say here? Your ministry is you do everything for the sake of the elect. That is the people you're sharing the gospel with. Your ministry is not for you. There's a great book written by a, well, it's compiled, but it's Charles Spurgeon. You guys familiar with it? It says, uh, Lectures to My Students. And in that book, he basically alludes to a principle which really struck, struck at my heart, where Spurgeon basically says, don't preach sermons to save yourself. Well, what did he mean by that? I didn't even understand what he meant by that until I thought about it for a while. Don't go into the ministry to gain your own salvation. So what he's saying there is that you don't get, and how would you gain your own salvation? You guys, the human heart has literally limitless ways of of self-glorification and self-elevation. And ministry is no exception where we go into it to be seen as in, 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 a, in a role of significance, to be have people say, oh, that was so amazing what you said. I was so moved. I, you're so wonderful. And what, what's happening? It's self-justification. And you could be in the pulpit preaching about justification by faith alone, and you're justifying yourself. So that, it, it, Paul says you do everything for the sake of the elect. Who is your ministry for? And if it's for you, guess what else? The sheep are going to sniff you out too, because the sheep may be, as I was talking about in my sermon this morning, sheep in the, in, you know, traditionally may not be too smart, but sheep will, people that know the Lord will sniff you out. And they know a wolf when they know, when they hear one. And here, I'll just read you Spurgeon. Here's the quote. He says, ministers, deacons, and elders may all be wise, but if the sacred dove departs and the spirit of strife enters, it's all over for us. Brothers, our system will not work without the Spirit of God, and I am glad it will not. For its stoppages and breakages call our attention to the fact of his absence. Our system was never intended to promote the glory of priests and pastors, but it is calculated to educate manly Christians who will not take their faith at second hand. What's he saying? We're not going to, people will not take it from a fraud, and people know that the Holy Spirit knows before your people that if you're if you're not engaged in ministry for the elect and not for yourself the holy spirit knows it and your people will know it number three your paul says look at the gospel for which i'm suffering don't jesus christ says i believe it's in matthew 13 everyone will hate you because of me so if you're going into ministry to be liked that is not going to happen everyone will hate you and if you're unwilling to be hated you're not going to be a faithful proclaimer of god's word because God's word will engender opposition from the enemy, it will engender opposition from the world, and it will engender opposition from people's just plain sinful selves. And you will suffer. This is Jesus. Jesus Christ not only uh, tells us it's going to happen, he promises us it's will. It's not an if, it's a when it's going to happen. You are going to suffer. You are going to lose social status, perhaps. You may even have to give up your job who knows for those first obviously generation of christians and subsequent generations they had to give up their very they had to give up their very life we die for the gospel and i think until a christian is a leader is willing to say they will die for the gospel what, then they can't lead because look at what did luther say in that wonderful hymn that we marched into were mighty fortresses are god were they to take our house goods honor child or spouse though life be wrenched away they cannot win the day the kingdom's ours forever in other words i already know who won the ultimate victory so i'm not worried about these minor battles where it appears that it's not going to go well for me i know jesus wins the ultimate victory that doesn't mean dan gets to win these little victories but my or little defeats i may have to endure that i may have to endure suffering jesus says if they did this to me they're gonna do it to you so just get ready. Don't view that as God's absence. Don't view that as you're not doing a good job. You may be doing exactly what you should be doing. I had a professor at seminary, Jim Kittleson, a Reformation scholar. He said, Dan, if you're doing your job correctly, you should be preaching the pews empty. That is that the message of the gospel should be cutting, right? It doesn't mean you go in and tear people down. No, the gospel will do that okay. The gospel tells us that you're a sinner. And that's, that, for some people, that's going to be a cut. And you can't tell people that they're going to be saved without talking about sin. And when you talk about sin, then you get to talk about a savior. Twas grace that taught my hearts to fear, our hearts to fear and grace my fears relieved, always unfortunately in that order. So you're going to suffer. And then lastly, Paul says, look, at, I love verse 8, don't you guys? It says, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. One of my, one of my favorite uh, stories is about a guy named Nels Ferre. He was a, 
a Lutheran systematic theologian from Scandinavia, and he came to the United States. He was born in 1908. He came to the United States uh, from Sweden, from a very, very destitute family. And he was always fond of telling the story when he left Scandinavia, I believe it was Sweden, to come to the United States. He tells this uh, story, which is just so pertinent to what the Apostle Paul just said, what I just read from Paul in verse 8. His mom knew that he would get a better education in the United States. His mom knew that he would be better taken care of, and so she was going to send him to go live in America, knowing that there's a good chance, right, that you'd never see each other again. I mean, that, you know, for like a 10-year-old boy, that's, that's hard. And he says, the night before I was to leave, he goes, it was just gut-wrenching. I was to leave, and he says, my mom, I figured she'd, she'd, we'd have dinner together, and she'd say something to me to comfort me, whatever, you know, give me some word or some embrace. And he goes, and my mom, who's usually affectionate, said nothing. He goes, I went to bed crying. Woke up the next morning, thought she would say something during breakfast. No. The, the, the ride to the train station, thought she would say something. Nothing. So he's just utterly just anxious and bound, knowing that he's probably never going to see his mom again. And he gets on the train, and she doesn't even say goodbye to him, or I love you, nothing. He's bawling, and he sits down, and as, as the train starts to pull out of the station, this is so cool, true story. He says, I saw something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. He says, there was my mom running after the train as it was beginning to pull out. And she had a piece of paper in her hand. And she put it up to the window where I was seated. And I read it. Now, remember, she hasn't said a word to him to bring him comfort. And it's the last thing she's going to tell her boy. I read it. And you know what it said? Remember Jesus most of all. If you had to tell your son or daughter something, the last thing you could tell them, wouldn't it be just that? Remember Jesus most of all. And it's no surprise, guys, that this is coming. This is written in 2 Timothy when the, the man who penned it or had a scribe pen, pen, or pen it for him knew that he was already being poured out like a drink offering and his time was coming. And he wanted to tell Timothy one last thing he should do. Remember Jesus most of all. You're going to be going into ministries, classrooms, uh, places where you're giving counseling maybe into the military. Who knows where the Lord is going to take you? There's a word from Nels Frey's mom today, and it's actually, she just got it from the Apostle Paul. When you are in these ministries, when, it's, when, it, when you're suffering, when, you're, when, the, when it's dark, when the clouds are coming on and it seems like the enemy's winning, he hasn't. Remember Jesus most of all. And I'm sure that's what these men would all say that you should be doing. Just remember Jesus most of all. Father, um, I pray a special blessing over all of us today that they, all of us here, that we may know who we're working for and who's in charge and that we may remember him most of all. When the enemy wants to tell us that we are, we are not loved, that we are sinners, we know that we are loved and because Lord Jesus Christ, your body was broken for us and you were gloriously raised for us. So we know who we are because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know because it's the gospel, if it were up to us to achieve some measure of identity, we wouldn't. We know who we are because of Jesus, and we thank you for that. And I pray as we go forward today, Lord, that you would fill everyone here and everyone who's listening with a godly zeal to bring about the message of salvation, the word of life to a world, especially right now, even in our country, that so desperately needs it. And I pray this in the strong and certain name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shaw. Whenever I'm in town, and I've been in town more since COVID, not traveling as much, if I can hang out with anybody, I hang out with Dan Shaw. He's a great teacher. He's a great preacher. He and his wife, Kim, have got a great church going here in Tacoma. Love to be with them, and I hope you were blessed by that as well. I uh, love that very much. At this point in time, however, it is... The time you've been waiting for, the presentation of the graduates.
So this year, we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to have some of our faculty come up and go through uh, certain names, certain degrees. I'm excited about that. Usually, when we're live, we always practice this at least once. We'll do it briefly for you at home. You can try this, because this is where you're going to make some noise. So I'm going to say some names. And after I say those names, you cheer. So this first, the first names are Andrew Benjamin Gabriel Hardy. And you're cheering. Come on. I expect it here, too, gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Second name is Ethan Backey. Yeah. Third name, Esme Gomez. Yeah. And of course, those are my five grandchildren. So they always get a shout out at the graduation. This is what we expect to have you do with those people that you uh, are surrounding you. Treat the graduates with uh, great acclaim. At this time, I'm going to have uh, Dr. John Wheeler, our Executive Vice President for Administration, and also an online instructor. Most of you have had a class with him. He's going to come up with Dr. Uh, Kyu Yun Lee, our other Executive Director of International Programs, and they will announce our, some of our Bachelor of Arts degrees. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Business, cum laude, Selena S. Hillhorse. Also in the Bachelor of Arts in Business, graduating summa cum laude, Tracy Houston. Graduating in the Bachelor of Arts in Business, Isaac Christian Huffman. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Education, magna cum laude. Eugene Kim, Kim Yu Jin. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Education, magna cum laude. Kang Uk Lee, Yi Kang Uk. Bachelor of Arts in Education, summa cum laude. Michaela Christine Perrick. Bachelor of Arts of Education, magna cum laude, Christopher R. Sheridan. Bachelor of Arts in Education, with a specialty in early childhood education, graduating magna cum laude. Wu Yun Son, Son Wu Yun. Graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, summa cum laude, Anna Faith Conteval. Graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, cum laude, Todrick Deshaun Johnson. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, magna cum laude, Jacob Mason. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, Summa cum laude, Jordan McLeod. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Business and Administration, cum laude, Anna McKinsey Sheehan. Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Children's Ministry and Church and Nonprofit Administration, graduating magna cum laude, Tiffany A. Thornton. And the Bachelor of Arts in Leadership, with a specialty in Psychology and Counseling, graduating cum laude, Chandler Brooks Rodriguez. I now present the Reverend Tyrone Hardy, who will be reading along with Dr. Lee for the other bachelor's degrees. These students will be receiving their Bachelor of Arts in Religion. Leah An. An He Su. Graduating with summa cum laude, Matthew Todd Anderson. Mark Russell Birch, summa cum laude. 
Jason Boucher. Zelias Kanani, cum laude. Derek L. Celestine, Sr. Ryan Farrell, summa cum laude. Drake A. Henderson, magnum cum laude. Gregory Kentrell Killens, Sr. Magna cum laude. Eun Kim. Kim Eun Jung. Cum laude. They are loud. really funny. We're in the crack and Kim. Kim Kyung Hee. They're guess the names and everything. I appreciate y'all being with us for real. Glenn E. So Lance. Magna cum laude. Thank you for coming to my graduation. Uh, Alvin. Woo. Alvin Malave Jr. Graduates, right? Summa cum laude. But they in here cracking up. Woo. Lorraine. Alan Munnerlin. Wesley Ray Newsom, summa cum laude. So I just add a little house noise to this thing. Cynthia Lynn Parker. No, it's not muted. Aaron M. Ricker, summa cum laude. Yo, he is laughing. You see, Randy I don't know L. why he grinning like he grinning. It's not muted. I'm just talking. Sun Hee, Shin, Shin Sun Hee, Summa Cum Laude. Kenneth William Sutton, Summa Cum Laude. Kelvin Lederick Thomas. Thank you, Lordy. Hey Young Watson, Watson Hey Young, Summa Cum Laude. Graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Religion with an emphasis in pastoral ministry. Shane Lee Lewis, magna cum laude. Hyo Shik Kim, Kim Hyo Shik. Yep. <laughs> now that's for DIS, so. <laughs> At this time, we will announce those receiving the master's degrees, beginning with the Master of Arts in Christian Counseling. Young M. On. An Young M. Young Ju Cho. Cho Young Ju. Michaela Yvonne Folk. Sung He Lee. Yi Sung He. Master of Arts in Christian Counseling. Edward T. Gullahue. Receiving the Master of Arts in Christian Education. Sky Danielle Dua. Master of Arts in Christian Education. April Anjanette Mallory Green. Master of Arts in Education in Adult Geriatric Education and Care. Tia Young Kim. Kim Young. Master of Arts in Education, with an emphasis in Adolescent Education. Sung Yun Cho. Cho Sung Yun. Master of Arts in Leadership Ministry. Molly Hall Fairchild. <laughs> David <laughs> Edward Hewitt. Joseph Lasse Kasanga. Terrence A. Nixon. Kimberly Dawn Wheeler, Master of Arts in Theological Studies, Shin Un Cho, Cho Shin Un, Lawrence E. Copeland Jr., Rodney D. Jeter, Sung Tae Kim, Kim Sung Tae, Mary Alina Valoni. Un Mi Yi. Yi Un Mi. I think he's correcting them. James Joseph Jackson Jr., Master of Arts in Theological Studies with a concentration in apologetics. Master of Divinity, Leslie Phyllis Holland. Norman Jared Howard. 
Andrew, Zane, Lowe, and Harrison M. Nungu. This represents our master's class 2020. At this time, I'd like to introduce the leader of our doctor of ministry program, our program coordinator, Dr. Bruce Banoski. This is actually, so this is my professor, Bruce, that's coming right now. We have two graduates this year from the doctor of ministry program and uh, one from our an initial a graduate from our Chinese division too, which is very exciting. Doctor of Ministry and Strategic Leadership is Emmett J. Lee. Our first graduate from the Chinese division, Master of Divinity and Strategic Leadership, Von Yi Ben. Great accomplishment. And finally, with a Doctor of Ministry and Transformational Leadership, Stacy Burdick. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Bernoski. This time I would like to bring up the DSL, Dr. Strategic Leadership Coordinator. He's also the director of uh, the professional doctorate program at Faith International University. He also serves as the dean of the School of Counseling and Care. Uh, Dr. Bronowski serves as the Dean of uh, Disciple School of Discipleship and Applied Studies. Uh, Dr. Tilly has a few more titles, but I, I, I won't go into all those. We'll just let him come up and announce his names. The Doctor of Strategic Leadership is a rigorous 80-quarter hour professional degree, culminating with a field research project and report to expand the kingdom of God through demonstrable change by marketplace ministry or service. I am honored to read the names of the graduates of the Doctor of Strategic Leadership and congratulate them. Gary Wayne Benton. Sheila R. W. Copeland. Vanya Lee. Lewis Thornton, Elizabeth Ann Wilson, Vincent Don P. Fortune. Once again, congratulations to all. Just several more degrees. We have a uh, graduate certificate in leadership in professional development, and that has been accomplished by Chu Ping Kuang. We have two Doctor of Religion degrees. The first is Darren David Crenshaw and James Nathaniel Hassel. And at this point, the last two degrees for this class are the Doctor of Humane yeah! Letters. And the Doctor of Humane Letters, those uh, degrees are honorary and they're given because of special service, special recognition to many years of Christian service. And our first honorary doctorate Doctor of Humane Letters goes to Jeffrey C. Fraley. Also receiving the Doctor of Humane Letters, <laughs> Ivy Reeves, Jr. Once more, let's celebrate our class, our graduates of 2020 with thunderous <laughs> applause. At this point in time, we will begin our recessional in just a moment with just a word of prayer and a benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful commencement service. We thank you for these graduates who are 
dedicated to you. Make them even greater disciples for your cause. Help them to go forth with boldness into the world, proclaiming the inerrant word of God, telling people about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us stand for the benediction. First in Hebrew, then in English. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace, celebrating. Amen. Thank you. Congratulations, Pastor. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Me too. So I appreciate you. I really appreciate y'all joining me for the whole ceremony. This was awesome. Thank you so much. We love you. Uh, oh, I love my family. <laughs> Love you guys. Come on. All right. Bless you, brother.